Greetings, Lucky Legends. Welcome to the dojo. My name is Lucky. This is Lucky Lad TV. I'm your host, Vinny, and it's time for our week four PMC Wi-Fi builder against the Great Lake Greninjas with fatness. I'm going to move this about the way and read off his team to you guys. He has... Clefable, Greninja, Curum, Jellicent, Mega Scizor, Rotom Heat, Hitmonlee, Gligar, Magnezone, Tauros, and Tornadus Incarnate. Now, here's the thing. Because he has Clefable, Tyranitar is useless. Because he has Mega Scizor, Tyranitar is useless. Because he has Rotom Heat, Mega Charizard is useless. So, my weather shenanigans will not work. Guaranteed. They're just, it's not gonna happen. So, I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone this week because I don't have my weather. So, that's not going to be the best. He also has Hitmonlee and Tornado's Eye, which, they're threats in and of themselves, but together they're really dangerous also. He has hazard stacking capabilities with Greninja, which is annoying. The other thing is, he has Mega Scizor. I was planning on drafting Mega Scizor, because that thing's fucking busted. Which, as you can see, that's why we have Fire Blast on our Azelf, even though we're defensive. So, basically, we're bringing this Azelf as its only purpose is offensive. The issue is we do get walled by Spideff Jellicent, which is a problem. Because he could, he's, I feel like he's going to bring Spideff Jellicent. Because I really don't have anything for it. With the exception of Mothra. But Mothra really doesn't take it on that well. That's the problem. The other thing about Jellison is that... Here's the thing. In, I have super bad 5 slot syndrome. Or 4 slot syndrome. Whatever you want to call it. With my Lodic this week. Because... In order to make sure that we don't get 1v1'd by Scizor, or 6 0 by Scizor, I do have to run Haze. Because if he brings sub SD Scizor, it can beat us 1v1. Because we cannot break his sub with Scald. If he is running, you know, enough bulk. Which really isn't that hard. Scizor has great natural bulk to it. Well, Mega Scizor does. So, I have to run Haze in order to make sure that he can't set up on us. You're probably thinking, well, why not run Dragon Tail? Dragon Tail won't break his sub. It's not very effective, and we have no attack. Recover and refresh. Refresh, I cannot be toxic and worn down because we need Milotic's bulk to even try to take on Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee is so... So incredibly bulky. So in sorry, incredibly offensive. That a choice scarf or a life orb high jump kick has a chance to two KO us. That's which is a problem. Even with leftovers, it's a problem. It has just such a high damage output. Uh, we do have Scald to try and burn it, but we really don't have anything for Hitmonlee, with one exception. Which is, of course, you know, Green Lantern. If we can break him on Lee's Sash with Stealth Rocks, or if he's bringing Choice Scarf or something like that, he can't one-shot us with Knock Off because we have the Culver Berry. So we can one-shot it back with Psy Shock. This is all the investment that we need in order to one-hit KO Mega Scizor with Fire Blast. It's all we need in order to one-hit KO Hitmonlee with Psy Shock. Um, it enables us to two-hit KO Spideff Gligar with Hidden Power Ice. 
It enables us to either two or one hit KO Tornadus. I think it's two hit KO with Thunderbolt. Um, we do two hit KO, I think, physically defensive Jalicent with Thunderbolt. Although I am not sure about that. We probably actually don't, now that I'm thinking about it. But we do have enough. I do believe we are able to one-shot Greninja, however. I think that's what the EVs are for. Ultimately, I EV'd it to be able to one-shot a max Spadef, max HP Scizor with Fire Blast. That's what was important to me. And then I dumped the rest into Defense and HP. After I gave myself enough speed to outspeed, I'm pretty sure max speed Scizor. That should be what we're, you know, speed creeping there. Um, I'm not 100% positive but I believe that's what we're outspeeding there. Like I said, basically what we're doing this season in the PMC, which is really convenient for me, especially, is we are doing all of the battles a, w a week before the uploads, but Friday's the only day that I have to record. So, I don't really have time to record the team builders because I don't want to do them live because those would take forever to render and upload. Otherwise, I would just record me doing it live, but I also don't usually do it all in one sitting. That's the other thing. But long story short, Scizor is a problem. It can 1v1 pretty much anything on my team. But that was Nessie and Green Lantern. Next up is Ruffles, my boy Ruffles. Um, we have Stealth Rock, Glare, Gunk Shot, and Thunder Punch. Uh, we live an Ice Beam from Modest Life Orb Greninja and proceed to one shot or deal a huge amount of damage to it with Thunder Punch. Same thing goes for Clefable. We live a Moon Blast and proceed to do a lot of damage to it with Gunk Shot. If we're in against Greninja, I would probably Glare it first before I Thunder Punch it, because Greninja's so fast, it outspeeds everything on my team, I would like to be able to get rid of it. Or at least, or at least try. Or at least slow it down. Um, we have enough speed to speed creep a 12 speed Clefable. So basically what that means is that if he has Clefable with 244 EVs in HP, 252 into Defense or Spadef, and then puts the other 12 in speed. He will hit 82 speed. We will outspeed it. Problem solved. So that's that. Um, the rest of the moves are self-explanatory. Stealth Rock is our hazards. Next up we have Shallow Grave with an Assault Vest. Now you're probably thinking that is not a lot of attack. And it's not. However, extra trail is base 135 attack, so I don't really need that much. Um, we do have a problem with Scizor with this set. It can set up on us. That's a problem. But I can't really do anything about it. Like I said, Scizor is a colossal problem for this team. Iron Head is there for Clefable. Uh, we have a chance to 2 it KO Clefable, I believe. It depends on what his spread is. Um, it's also there for Curum. Rock Slide is there for Tornadus Incarnate. Earthquake will one-shot Magnazone. It will one-shot Rotom Heat. Even if Magnazone has Sturdy, one-shot. Even if, well, Rotom Heat has Levitate, Mold Breaker, one-shot. Because of that Mold Breaker, we're able to one-shot two of the Mons that are generally considered able to beat us. Assault Vest enables us to take two overheats, sorry, one overheat from Rotom. It allows us to take an overheat from Rotom, in, like, just in case he's Choice Scarf Rotom, because that's the only way he can outspeed us. If he's Choice Scarf Rotom, we take an overheat after Stealth Rock, that's the important part, and proceed to one-shot with Earthquake. We also one-shot Magnezone with Earthquake, as I said. Granted, he probably will bring Magnet Pull so that we can't escape, which is why I have, you know, max speed. 
Well, the max speed is really just there to outspeed Rotom and Hitmonlee, technically. But it's really there for Rotom. Um, I would hit 153. But that's not an option. As you'll see right here, if I go down to 244, we hit 152. It's literally not an option. But that is going to be Shallow Grave, Our Girl, the Extra Drill. Next up is Sprinklers. Max Speed Def, Max HP, and obviously Stealth Rock number 12 into Defense. This thing takes on Clefable pretty well. It takes on Curum pretty well. It takes on Jellicent pretty well. It takes on Magnezone pretty well. This is basically just our, our all around special wall, which is one of the things that I really love about Porygon 2 is that you can make it either physical or special or mixed from a defensive standpoint because it has that great natural bulk to it. If it got refresh, it would be even better. Or if it had magic guard, that would make it broken because you couldn't toxic stall it, which is why I'm bringing Trace. I'm hoping that we can bring this thing in on Clefable and Trace its magic guard to kind of give us like even more bulk than we already have by you know preventing us from being you know whittled down but try attack shadow ball is perfect coverage for his team he has nothing that resists both of those and the and then we, of course we have thunder wave because it's the best move in the game he also has a lot of really fast threats um greninja hitmonlee tauros tauros is a problem Life Orb Taurus can put in work. And Tornadus Eye, if he brings a bulk upset, that could be really scary. But the last Pokemon on our team is going to be Mothra. Uh, Quiver Dance 3 attacks. Um, enough speed to outpace Hitmonlee. And then coverage for the rest of his team. This coverage enables us to, you know, it enables us to beat the rest of his team between Tinted Lens boosted attacks and stab and hidden power fire we can break through his team if we are able to get the boosts that we need however we have a bulk problem because we're a mothra we're venomoth we're not bulky that's me thank you all so very much for watching and i will see you all next week with the next team builder Bye bye